So today I'm going to be showing you how to quickly fix blowouts and unnecessarily large cuts around electrical outlets. Now this is a pretty common repair that has to be made whether or not when the boxes were being installed the holes were just cut too large or it could be from when the boxes were being installed and the holes were cut maybe there was damage done to the drywall in the process of installing everything and over time now you have some blowout where it's broken through. Now as you can see here the damage around this box looks awful and it can't even be covered by the plate that goes over it. But it's nothing to worry about. This is a really easy fix and it won't take a whole lot of time. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Let's go. So the first thing I want to do before I remove this cover plate is I want to shut off the circuit breaker that's supplying the power to these outlets. Just in case while I'm working on this I don't accidentally shock myself. Now that the circuit breaker is off now I can remove the cover plate. So now that cover plate is off you can see that this is a pretty large hole and actually since this was due to impact the damage is actually going to extend beyond what you can actually see. If you feel up and in, in around where the hole is you can actually feel where the drywall has been knocked away even underneath of here. So I'm just going to feel around in the hole where the drywall feels like it's no longer damaged and then I'm going to use a pencil and make a mark approximately where I no longer feel any damage on the drywall. And I'm going to do this on three sides around the hole. Now I'm going to use a tape measure and I'm actually going to measure out some lines that are about a half an inch or so from my original markings just to make sure that I cut out enough of the drywall so I get back to good undamaged drywall. So now that I've got my marks to where I want the cutout to extend to, now I'm just going to use a really small level to make my lines. I like to use a level just because I think it makes a more accurate line, especially when you're intersecting the lines. But you could use any kind of a straight edge or a square if you wanted to. So now I've got my lines to where I want to cut this drywall section out. Now I'm just going to use my jab saw and cut it out. And when cutting drywall out, you definitely want to make sure that you're aware of what's in behind your drywall, making sure that there's no electrical wires running in behind it or any kind of plumbing. As you can see, there was quite a bit of blowout there, which is why I wanted to extend out a little bit further than where I thought. At this point, I might as well add another electrical outlet. So before I start filling this hole, I'm going to have to add some form of support. In this case, I'm just going to be using this little piece of scrap wood that I found laying on the shop floor. Uh, this really could be just about anything, uh, scrap wood or shims, really anything similar to this could be used. But I want my support to be longer or taller than the hole is. So in this case, if I put it up against the hole, it's about an inch longer on each side, top and bottom. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of wood and I'm going to put a screw right in the middle of it. This is going to help with placing the piece of wood where I need it to be and also holding it up against the wall to screw it in place. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that piece of scrap wood, I'm going to fit it down into this hole, and I'm going to make sure that I've got my overlap on both sides, and then I'm just going to insert a couple of drywall screws. Now that the support is in place, now I can remove the screw that I was using to hold it. So now I'm ready to start actually filling the hole. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a tape measure and get my dimensions so that I know what size of drywall I need in order to make this repair. Now I'm going to take my measurements and I'm going to put them on my piece of drywall in order to cut out the size that I need. Now I had a scrap piece of drywall laying around. Now if you don't have a scrap piece of drywall, it's not a big deal. You can pick these up pretty much anywhere. They typically come in a two by two foot section and they're not terribly expensive. So now I've got my lines for the size of the piece of drywall that I want. Now I'm going to actually cut a line from one side of the board to the other. And this is just so that when I go to break out the drywall that I want to use in my repair, they're all nice, clean, straight cuts and there isn't any paper damage. Now that I've got this all scored, now I can just break this bottom piece off. So the paper on the back side is still going to be holding it in place. So now that it's broken, all I'm going to do is flip over the drywall. I'm just going to hold this flap up and then you can see there's this line that's being formed here where it's folding. I'm just going to cut along that line on the paper. So now I just need to score down my line that I made earlier. Once I've got it scored, I'm going to do the same thing I just did a little bit ago. Break it off and then just flip it over and cut down the fold again. So now I'm going to take my little repair piece and just put it into the hole. And this fits it just about exactly how I wanted it to. I actually cut this to be just slightly smaller than the hole because I actually want a little bit of gap along each of the edges 
so that my joint compound or my spackle can actually get into those little gaps there which is just going to make this repair a whole lot stronger. I also don't want it to be too loose to where I've just got giant gaps. So now that I know that it dry fits the way that I want it to, now I'm just going to take a screw, put it right in the middle of the drywall piece and screw it down to the support wood underneath of it. Now I'm just gonna go around real quick with my putty knife just to knock off any excess paper that's sticking up or any bumps. Now I'm gonna go around all the sides of the repair applying this mesh drywall tape and this is gonna help to bridge the gap between the repair piece and the drywall that's already there. It's also gonna help with mudding all this in. All right, so now that I've got all my drywall tape in place, now I'm gonna actually start applying my spackle. Now when I'm first applying this, especially where those gaps are around the repair, I wanna make sure that I'm putting down a nice amount of pressure on those so that I'm pushing my spackle through the tape and getting into those cracks. Once I feel like I've got enough on the edges there now, just fill everything in and I'll try to make everything as even as possible. I don't want to put it on so thick that I'm going to be sanding all day long after this dries, but I also don't want to put it on so thin that I'm still able to see the tape underneath of it. And I'm going to actually be using spackle. You can use joint compound. There's quite a few different things that you can use to do repairs like this. I personally just like to use spackle because it's already pre-mixed, it's quick drying, and it just, for me, doing these smaller repairs, it just works really well. But if you've got some joint compound laying around, you can certainly use that too. All right, so I've allowed plenty of time for this to dry. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start sanding it. And I'm gonna use this 180 grit sanding block. Now you can use different kinds of sandpaper to do this, but I would stay around that 180 grit, maybe even 150 grit. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna apply some constant pressure to this, not too hard. You don't wanna take too much off at once and you can't see how much you've taken off. And all of a sudden, if you start taking off too much by putting down too much pressure or focusing in one place too long, you might end up starting to see that tape underneath. And if you start seeing that tape underneath or you start taking off way too much in one area, well, then you're gonna have to reapply joint compound or spackle and you're just gonna have to start this all over again. So just wanna have a little bit of constant pressure on it, just gradually working this down. All right, so that's looking and feeling really smooth. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next step, which I'm gonna use a vacuum and just clean this whole area up. I wanna make sure I get all of the dust off that was caused from all of the sanding. So when I come back to paint, it will adhere well and it'll look good. So now I'll just come back with a real quick coat of paint and spread that out evenly. And then that's it. So as you can see here, the difference between how it looked before and now how it looks after, there is a massive difference. It looks the way that it should have looked to begin with. So as you guys saw, it was really easy to do. It didn't take a whole lot of time and it was inexpensive. So if you're up to the task, definitely give it a try. So I hope that this was helpful for you. If it was, please let me know by giving the video a thumbs up. And of course, if you have any questions at all, I always welcome them down in the comment section down below. And if you haven't done so already and you like do-it-yourself type videos like I did here today, then consider hitting that red subscribe button. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. See ya.